Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can create some sort of Lunar Lander game in Game Maker Studio 2 and I'm going to be splitting this into multiple parts because there is great potential for some suggestions from all of you. So this is sort of the basis that we're going to be creating. We've got play game settings, exit game with this nice little background, kind of minimalist. If we go settings, we can select our difficulty and these have little uh, text here that tell us exactly what's changed. These are all reading and writing to any files. And then if we go play game, we have the little lunar lander. He's using some physics, he's using some particles there. He's got gravity set. We've got a fuel level. We've got some sort of objective here at the bottom. And also if we get close to the objective, notice we have a little animation that puts the little legs and those little feet come out in order for us to land. So in part one today, we're going to be looking at getting everything together. We've got the main menu going. We're going to be getting our little lander out there. And then part two, we're going to be covering pretty much the particle effects and the objective. And then from there, we're just going to be taking it as we go from all the suggestions I get from you guys. Perhaps we add some views, create a bigger map, some objectives, things to fly through, points, refueling stations, things like that. Alright, so let's jump straight into the code and I can show you how you can make your very own Lunar Lander inspired game. So here we are within our bare bones basic project. I've just got these sprites here. I've got a lander that I put together some time ago. It's got a little animation. So whenever we get close to the ground, these little legs are going to deploy out. That's really awesome. We've got the surface, which is just the ground. It's got a little 64 by 64 gray block. Got the background for the main menu. And then I've got two buttons, the play button and the exit button. Both of these have sub images, as we can see here. Let's change this to like a five so you can see what it's like, or maybe a two. So when the mouse goes over it, it changes the sprite to one of the sub images. Okay, so first things first, because both of these buttons do the same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and create a parent for them. So let's call this object button parent. And it's going to have a create event as well as a step event. Let's make this bigger. The create event is just going to set the x coordinates to the middle of the room. So we don't have to be too precise when we place it there later ourselves. Now, the step event is going to do the flashing between. So there's two ways we can do this there's the if collision. Uh, point mouse x mouse y self one false so if the mouse x and mouse y collides with this object at a precision of one pixel so that's quite precise then we can set the image index equal to one otherwise the image index will then be zero and the other way is to use the mouse enter and mouse leave events right over here to pretty much do the one and the zero. It's your preference. You can use whichever one you prefer. I'm just going to do this because, well, I've already typed it out. Okay, cool. So that's done. Let's go ahead and now create the various buttons that we have. Object play. It is going to select the parent being the button parent. And the next one is going to be object exit. Also going to have that parent. Now check this out, if we go back to the button parent over here, it now shows that he's got a child. Let me just save this guy. Oh, whoopsie. Button parent right over there. He should have two children over there. And I think this will remove him. But we don't want to do that, and you can actually select other objects to be children. So that's kind of a shortcut right over there. Okay, so the play button is already going to inherit both of these events, the create and the step. So we don't have to do anything. But one thing we do want to do is implement the mouse left pressed. In here I'm going to say room go to something called RM game world. So that's going to be the game world where all the action happens. Gravity, the player's lander, the heads up display and the objectives. It's going to happen in the game world which we will create in a second. Object exit on the other hand is also going to have a left pressed event but he is going to do game end. There we go. Now let's go ahead and set up these sprites. Play is going to have buttons play and exit's going to have oopsie wrong one. It's going to have buttons exit. Next let's go ahead and create the menu. Here we go. I'm going to scroll down here make this 
192.0 by 108.0. So that's full HD right over there. I'm going to call this RM menu. For the background, I'm going to select background here at the layers. And down here at the background layer, I'm going to select the background image. Right like that. Let's zoom out a bit so you can see. There it is. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and select instances. Got that layer selected. Head over to objects and drag in these new buttons. Play and exit game. Okay, so these will automatically send themselves. If I put it up here, it's gonna end up over there and such. So let's kind of put it where we think the middle is. You just have to worry about the Y axis. And these are both here in the instances layer. Notice they don't exist for the backgrounds layer. And if we create another layer here, we can go ahead and reposition them and put one layer above the other one. So I'm going to fire this up and we're going to be hovering our mouse over these buttons to see that they do in fact change their image index. Okay, so here's our main menu. We've got the play and the exit game buttons. Play game's not really going to do anything because that room doesn't exist. It's probably going to give us an error and exit will exit the game. So that's looking good. These are centered nicely and later on we'll actually be incorporating a third button which is going to be the settings so that we can change difficulties and, I don't know, maybe we have some other little things that we want to add there. It'll just give us a placeholder for any other settings we can think of at a later stage. So let's go ahead and now create the game world as well as the little Lunar Lander that's going to be doing all the work. Okay, so let's go ahead and close the room menu and create our ground. Object ground. It's going to have that gray uh, block and I'm going to go ahead and now Create the game world. RM game world. Also 1920 by 1080. It's not going to have a background, but we will have a whole lot of instances of the block. Just like that, quite simple. So if our player collides with the ground without landing on some sort of objective, then it's a fail. Cool beans. Let's head over and create the lunar lander. Object lander. This is actually going to be quite fun, this bit. So let's set a sprite up. Sprite lander. Let's add a create event to set some gravity. Gravity equals 0.1. I don't know if that's good. We'll check it out as we play around. Fuel is going to be 100%. Our image index is going to equal zero, so that's the very first image index. Our image speed is also going to be equal to zero, because we're going to be controlling when those little landing pads come out. So long as we have fuel, we can operate this craft. And right now that's true. So later on we'll have a step event that um, takes key presses, reduces the fuel, and then when fuel is equal to zero, we're going to set this can operate to false, which is then going to disable pretty much all the key detections. Okay, add event, step. Here I'm going to say if can operate equals true, I want to make sure that we have a maximum fall speed. It's going to be our terminal velocity. So V speed is, I don't know, say greater than 8, then V speed is going to equal 8. So 8 is going to be our terminal velocity. If keyboard check VK down, so if we're pushing down, that's going to be to thrust ourselves up. We need to also make sure that we have a maximum thrust speed. I'm going to set that to the same as our terminal velocity. So V speed is greater than negative 8. So it's 8 pixels in the negative direction, which is going up. Then V speed minus equals 0.2. So that's the amount of thrust that we have. And also our fuel is going to be reduced by 0.2 because thrusting costs fuel. If we press the left key, then I'm going to want the craft to sort of um, tilt a bit to the left because uh, you know thrusting is going to be at the bottom, so it's tilting to the left a bit, and then it's going to be moving to the right. So here we're dealing with horizontal speed. So if the H speed is less than five, so we're going to be thrusting left and right at about five pixels per step. So it's actually slower to move left and right than it is to move up and down. So that kind of makes sense. Then our H speed is going to increase by 0.1, so we're going towards the right of the screen, which is increasing the horizontal. Again, our fuel is going down by 0.2, and I'm gonna copy this one and paste it below. If we are hitting the right key, if our eight speed is greater than negative five, 
then it's going to decrease by 0 0.1. And again, our fuel is going down by 0 0.2. I'm actually going to make this 0 0.1, seeing as though our edge speed is slightly less. So it's going to be more efficient to go left and right than it is to go up. And while we're doing this, actually, like I said earlier, let's change this angle. So if image angle is less than 5 degrees, then I'm going to say image angle uh, plus equals 1 degree. So we're going to tilt to the left. And this one we are going to tilt to the right. Just like that. And because there's a little bit of gravity, what I'm going to assume at this point, and correct me if I'm wrong here, um, if there's a few astrophysicists in the room, uh, but I'm actually going to let the craft settle a bit. Perhaps there's some sort of um, micro controller on board that uses little thrusting to stabilize the craft. So I'm actually going to say that if no key is pressed, then we're going to stabilize and return back to zero degrees slowly. So we can still do that in operate. So let's assume that you can only do this when you have fuel. If you have no fuel, then perhaps those stabilizers just don't function. So right here after all our key detects, I'm going to say, if not, keyboard check and I can say left. Then if image angle is less than zero, image angle plus equals 0 0.05. Um, so it will slowly, very, very slowly return back to a stable environment, in this case, which will be zero degrees. So it's greater than zero, it's gonna be decreasing by 0 0.05. So that's all while we have fuel. And actually what I need to do at the bottom is say here, if fuel is less than or equal to zero, I want to make sure that fuel doesn't get below zero, so it's going to equal zero, and can operate equals false. So that'll stop any of this magic from happening, which will simulate that sort of effect of having zero control whatsoever. I also want to make sure that if we press escape in game, that is, I want to, okay, so key down, others, escape. I want to say room, go to, uh, RM menu. We go so we can go back to the main menu if we want and also if we collide with the ground collision with the ground big problem gravity is going to equal zero so we're no longer moving um, for safety i'm going to set my h speed and my v speed equal to zero and also can operate equals false because we've crashed and all it's going to do is sit there for now and the user can push escape and go back to the menu now while we've got all this, it's really cool to have some sort of heads-up display that later on we can stylize and make look really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and create a object HUD, so that's our heads-up display, and it's actually going to need a font to go along with it. So this is going to be called FNT Main. I'm going to select a font that everyone has. Impact I think is cool. Let's go for Impact, it kind of looks meaty. Make that 20. Okay, cool. Go back to our heads-up display. We want to use the draw GUI event. And as always, I'm going to draw set color, make color RGB. And this is going to be awesome slash Rex Games Lime. Which I believe, if I remember correctly, because I haven't done this in a while, is 183, 224, 31. We're going to draw set font. FNT main. I'm going to get used to these automatic braces getting added. Next, let's draw some useful text here. Let's see, we've got the speed and we've got the angle of the craft. That kind of seems important. X, Y, and I'm going to convert that to a string. Object lander dot speed. And then next, let's draw text X, Y. What is this thing complaining about? Nope. It's just very slow. String, and wait, it can't be Y. It needs to be Y plus 30. So it's going to be a little lower than that. Object lander dot image angle. Like that. Now I want some sort of danger to be shown. Perhaps if your fuel level is lower than a certain amount, the text color can change to like a red and we can display the fuel. Otherwise, the fuel would be in the color that it is here. So here I'm going to say if object lander dot fuel is less than 25%, do one thing, otherwise do another. So in this case, the one thing is going to be draw set color 
see red. And you know what? I don't even have to have this else. I can just go straight ahead and draw text. This is going to be plus 60. And this is going to be fuel. And what this will do is, if it is less than equal to 25, it'll automatically set this to red and draw the fuel. Otherwise, this piece of text will be drawn in the original color of green. All right, let's save that up. Good old game world. Two things we need to add here. Make sure we're on the instances. Good. Let's drag in our heads up display right over there. And let's drag in our lander. Now, there's nothing for it to land on just yet. And he isn't creating anything fancy when it comes to showing those thrusters working, you know, particle effects. Well, none just yet. But let's go ahead and let's test this out and see what it looks like. Right, so back in the main menu, if I click the play button, it's going to take us to the game world where the lander is waiting for us to give it some instructions. So here we go. If I push the down key, are we reducing our fall, increasing our height over here? Left is going to shoot us to the right until to the left and the opposite with the right key. So we're bouncing around. If you look at the top left, you can see we've got the speed going quite slow, running out of fuel on 30%. Should be going to red now. And as soon as we hit zero, we're going to fall out of the air even though I'm pressing buttons. So let's go. See, I'm pushing, nothing's happening. We are crashing. And we crash. And the game at this point would then have some sort of failure message allowing the user to input a high score, to try again, perhaps go to the main menu, change settings, make things slightly easier. It's all up to them. So I'm gonna end off this part of the tutorial right here. Coming up next, we're going to be covering the particle effects to make this look a little bit more flashy while we're here in the game world. So if you like this tutorial, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more of the very best gaming tutorials. Um, I also invite you to check out my Patreon campaign. Links are in the description. I really do appreciate your support. Project files for this are also in the description. If you have any suggestions for this tutorial series, now's the time to let me know about them. Send me a PM or just put them in the comments below. I've already got some really awesome feedback from some of you guys who are following me on Facebook and Twitter. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then. Oh,